uh, for today's our topic is children force mass and acceleration this is a very important uh, uh, topic children force mass and acceleration this topic it gives a relation between resultant force mass and acceleration so what is that equation this law was given by and this equation was given by a very famous scientist isaac newton and the equation i want to show you uh, and this equation you will find f is equal to product of mass multiplied by acceleration means in this case that we have an object whose mass is m and on it some force is applied due to that force due to that force you then object accelerate so what is the acceleration produced is given by the letter small a so force is equal to mass time acceleration this is called newton's yeah it is written here this is called newton's second law newton's second law of motion according to newton's second law of motion that if you apply a force on any object it will accelerate it will accelerate and another important thing about the newton second law is that from this equation higher the mass higher the mass of any object higher the mass of the object higher will be the force required the force required to accelerate for example children if i take an example of uh, just two stones two stones or two rope two pieces of rope one is smaller and other is bigger then you know children if you want to pull or push more these stones one is smaller other one is bigger please remember so in case of a, a stone having a smaller mass less weight you need to require less force to make that object to into motions but on the other side object having higher mass that you need to exert a higher force to make or to accelerate that object this is the same situation children that if you suppose if you want to a uh, stop a moving car or a cycle that if you want to stop a moving car that is very difficult means if you want to stop you need to apply a larger and larger force but it is easy for all of us to stop a moving cycle or bicycle that please remember this difference and uh, this equation f equal to m into a and uh, in exams you have to apply this equation in a situation when mass is given some initial velocity final velocity is given time period is given or even acceleration is given so with the help of this equations you can calculate uh, the third unknown value two values will be given f equal to mass into acceleration mass will be there acceleration will be there they can ask you find the force sometimes force is given mass is given they will ask you find the acceleration so with the help of this equation you can find all these things that two physical quantities will be there third unknown value you can calculate from this equation remember children acceleration you can write is equal to force divided by mass now let me move ahead children and uh, <coughs> look at this diagram children look at this figure and uh, on this statement what is the acceleration of the model car on the right this is a car a model car and look at this diagram carefully and the all the forces given acting on this car one force is 18 newton in the forward direction to the positive x axis second force is 10 newton to the left hand side mass is given and you what you have to calculate acceleration acceleration you need to calculate children so uh, maybe initially in your mind that this equation can come that a is equal to v minus u by t but if you look at this equation children in this statement no information is given about the initial velocity no information is given about the final velocity and neither the time is given so i can't use this equation as per the requirement of this question but from the newton second law children that the equation just we have 
um, I, so f is equal to mass time acceleration. I can use this equation here. And then I need to find A that is equal to force divided by mass. Now what this force children, what this force, forward force, backward force. Kiss here, Anushya. Forward. This is the, no, no, this is not the forward force. Actually, this is the resultant force. It is the resultant of the total force acting on the system. So resultant force is here. What is the resultant force, children? FR equal eight. to 18 minus eight. 10, that is equal to 8. eight. So this car, a model car is accelerating to the positive direction, to the on the positive x axis to the right hand side due to the resultant force of 8 Newton acting on this car. So you need to write 8 here divided by the mass given in the statement, which is 2, 8 divided by 2 gives you acceleration of 4 meter per second square. So this is the way to calculate acceleration whenever uh, the resultant forces are acting on any object. Uh, okay, Katan, you may go, please. Now, no, no, next. Acceleration is always on in ms square. Yeah, in meter per second square. That is the unit for measuring acceleration, meter per second square or meter s minus two. Now look at the question number two, children. I want to discuss this one also. And uh, what is the resultant force on the car below? Look at this image, children. Yeah, resultant force, 1500 minus 500 Newton. You have to write, you have to write children in the exam, uh, not the direct answer, but you have to show you're working 1500 minus 500. That will give you answer 1000 Newton. So 1000 Newton is the resultant force which is acting in the direction of higher force. So this car will move in the direction of positive x axis to the right hand side or in the direction of a higher force that is of 1500 Newton. So in, in any way you can write your answer, but children remember you had to specify the direction. So the second part, what is the car acceleration? Again, children, you have to apply the same equation. A is equal to force divided by mass force. Again, children, remember this is the resultant force. It's not about 1500, it's not about 500, but it's the resultant force and which is we already calculated in part A, 1000 divided by mass, 800 kilogram is there. Children, remember if you find this mass is in gram, you need to convert into kilogram. It, if this is in, in any other unit, you need to convert it into SI system. So 1, 0, 2, 0, cancel out 10 by 8, 4, uh, 2, 5 is 10, 2, 4 is 5 by 4. That gives you result 1.25. Again, the unit is children, ms minus 2 is the acceleration of this car. In the third part, children, if the total force, friction force rises to 1500 Newton, what happened to the car? They are saying if somehow that the car is moving and uh, friction force that the opposite force start increasing in such a way that this backward force becomes equal to the forward force, then what happens with the motion of the car? Yes, please. Well, it's stationary. It's not yeah. Stationary. Anyone else? The acceleration will be constant, maybe. Here, what happens, children? Very good. Acceleration becomes constant. Now, in this state, this is like the terminal velocity concept. Whenever the backward force becomes equal to the up, up, uh, forward force, at that time, the resultant force will be zero. But as already the car was in, in motion, car was already in motion, so it keep moving, but, but without accelerating, it will move with a constant velocity. So that will be the answer. But children, remember, if the car is at rest position, if the car is at rest position, and if you applied a force, and then there will be a backward force, that is the force of friction. So in that case, that the object will remain stationary. So it is the situation like in the free fall motions, even though that the 
weight of the body is balanced by the total upward force the resistance forces still body will or the parachute or the person they will move downward even though the forces are balanced but they move how they will move actually uh, acceleration also becomes zero here I, I need to correct myself acceleration becomes zero because when the forces are equal no force will be there acceleration builds zero and the object is moving with the constant velocity whenever object move with constant velocity acceleration is zero let me uh, explain this part also children and uh, from the equation of uh, i need some some space to write uh, as we have this equation children f equal to mass into mass multiplied by acceleration and uh, in case when the force becomes zero as you have seen in the pre in the in the question f equal to zero forward and backward force becomes equal then what happens this equation mass times acceleration will be zero so in mathematics you might have learned about that from this equation that product of mass and acceleration is zero and uh, we know that mass is never equal to zero mass is never equal to zero then we have only acceleration from this equation only the possibility that acceleration will be zero and if acceleration is zero what do you mean by this acceleration zero acceleration zero means we have another equation of acceleration v minus u by t that is the change in velocity upon time taken acceleration is zero then this equation becomes v minus u equal to zero and finally v equal to u where it is possible children that v equal to u v equal to u means initial velocity equal to final velocity so initial velocity equal to final That's velocity true. that the object is moving with a constant velocity when acceleration is zero acceleration will be zero when there is no when the resultant force is actually zero Now let's move to the friction topic, children. And uh, what is a friction? What is a frictional force? The force that slows down objects in motion. It slows down objects and eventually could make them stop, make them cease stationary. Bunch. Uh, yes, sir. What about friction? What What do you think about friction? Uh, it's a force that stops moving objects. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So children, that friction is a force, like a force, we were talking about force, but it is an opposite force, and which try to oppose the relative motion between two objects. It tried to oppose the relative motion between two object means that one object is placed on the other object. For example, if you see here in the diagram, diagram this, this wheel, roller is placed on a surface so this will it roll on the surface on a surface so force of friction will try to oppose the relative motion between the two surfaces so that force of friction that force is called a force of friction and to make this topic clear let me use whiteboard and let me explain some more information about this topic of friction Suppose you learn that I have this object and this object is placed on a table. This table, okay. And uh, then you know there is the mass and the weight of the object which you can represent here with this arrow. Weight is acting downward. And now on this object, suppose if I applied a force, this is my applied force. This is applied force along the right hand side. Now, when I applied this force, suppose initially that the impact of force means I have applied a very, very small force, very small force. And uh, so if the force is very small, then I can assume that, that this object, it not move, it not accelerate, it remains stationary. So why do this object remain stationary? Because immediately when you apply a force, there will be an opposite force come into picture come into picture 
this is opposite force. And the name given to this opposite force is called the force of friction. So here I can write force of friction by letter F, F, force of friction. This force of friction will come when there is an applied force. But if there is no applied force, there is no frictional force. But as soon as you apply a force, immediately there will be an opposite force, which try to oppose the relative motion of this box on the surface of the table. So it means children, object remains stationary unless and until our applied force becomes greater than or almost equal to the force of friction. If our applied force is greater than or equal to the force of friction, then after that the object starts moving or accelerates. Now children here, if the object is remain stationary, if the remains object remains stationary, then the friction present at that time, that kind of friction is called static friction. We have actually the two type of two categories of friction. One is the static and other one is the dynamic, dynamic friction, dynamic, dynamic friction. Static friction is, will be there in the object whenever uh, applied force is there and object remains stationary. But dynamic is related to the motions. Suppose we have achieved this condition when applied force is able to break the bond between the surface and the uh, object surface and the surface on which it is placed. So we have Fa is greater than or equal to the force of friction. Then object will start sliding, object will start rolling, object will start uh, uh, maybe uh, moving. So in that situations, if object is in motion, will there be any uh, friction? If objects are in motion, children, will there be any uh, force of friction? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, so no. there will be a force of friction between the wheels, means between the surfaces of the two objects. And at that time, whatever the friction is present, that friction is called the dynamic friction. So dynamic frictions or kinetic friction, there is another name, kinetic. kinetic friction. So these are the names given to the friction when object are, object is in motion, dynamic or kinetic friction. And, but remember children that the kinetic friction's value, suppose let me write uh, FK, kinetic friction value is always lesser than uh, the frictional, static friction, static friction's value, remember children. Kinetic friction value is always, initially you need to apply a larger force to make the object into motions, but once the object is already in motion, then kinetic friction will be lesser compared with the static friction. Sir? No, 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 here FA is not, uh, uh, here the letter which I have written children, This FA is means applied force, applied. This A is in subscript, this is applied force. Is this clear now? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, once asked me, sir, FA is not acceleration. Uh, A is not acceleration, F is not acceleration, but FA is applied force. I mean the force that you have applied on the object. Sir, if the applied force is equal to the friction, then the object will still be stationary, right? Uh, this is the situations that uh, still object, but the object will be at the verge of just in motions. If a slighter uh, will be a force greater than that value, a, a by maybe a point, 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 one object will start moving. So we will just consider in the limit form that object applied force is equal or just greater than. Oh, okay, sir. Now let me go back children and uh, so this is a friction topic children and uh, there is no need to discuss more about the friction here it is enough in grade, up to grade ninth and uh, there are some benefits of a friction there are sometimes there are consequences of friction children you know uh, children that the benefits i'm writing on my laptop screen with the pen uh, due to the force of friction between the tip of the pen and on the laptop screen 
and you are able to sit properly on the chair due to the presence of friction due to the presence of the friction otherwise you will slip you can't sit on a chair and due to the presence of friction children we can walk we can walk and uh, this car can walk you know we can drive we can ride so this all are possible due to the presence of friction if you remove the friction means if you are able to make a surface a very smooth surface very smooth and shining surface then you know that if you try to walk you will slip then you cannot walk there but you can slide there you will slip there so depending upon the situation children that uh, during skates you know wheels rollers and uh, they will make a lesser friction will be there when we use a, a roller or wheels instead of a, a flat surface so these are the things children that you need to explore by yourself that uh, sometimes friction is beneficial for us and sometimes it is not good for us for example in machinery in machineries in industries we need to regularly have to put oil grease and paint to avoid wear and tear in machines if wear and tear will be there then you know that the loss will take place a machine will get heated and that the efficiency of the machines will reduce to avoid these things we need to put oil and greasing to avoid uh, friction force of friction there so in machines and industries we have to remove frictions but when we are talk about ourselves uh, we can walk easily due to the presence of friction i want to move to the next topic children and the next topic is force weight and gravity i'm just uh, not explaining all these things in detail children these are the smaller topics and we are also you know uh, shortage of time that your exams are coming and we need to complete uh, this chapter next topic force weight and gravity already we have discussed the force children we have discussed the weight in the first chapter that weight is a force in the first test some students made a mistake that uh, that there was a question about uh, what what weight weight is a force some of the students they have written that weight is a mass so how weight is related weight is related with a force not with mass but definitely that weight is given by is the product of mass multiplied by the gravity at that particular place so weight equal to mass into g gravitational field strength now i want to discuss uh, uh, about the gravitational force children so please pay attention for our next few minutes what is this gravitational force anyone from mind the force that pulls you back to earth downward force from the earth due to the gravitational force okay. attraction force towards greater mass hmm. okay good so gravitational force is basically children this uh, the concept of gravitational force was given by again um, isaac newton many years back and uh, so what he explained that he said in this universe children in this universe each and every object attracted with a force each and every object in this universe they attract each other with a certain kind of force and the name given to that force is called the gravitational force right now children you are sitting at your place you are at your home i am here and there is a distance between you and me but as per the newton's law of gravitation it means you are attracting me and i am attracting you means all of us are exerting a force on each other that is the force of attraction now on the other side in our solar system why in our solar system you know that uh, there is a theory according to that that the sun is stationary and all the planets they revolve around the sun our earth is revolving around the sun initially that was not the case initially that you know i'm not i am not interested to go to the history but children that initially there was a case that earth was stationary but uh, that the sun is revolving around the earth but now uh, even now at this time everything is in motion but we will consider that sun a uh, sun is stationary and all the planets they revolve around the sun so this is possible due to the gravitational force here and this gravitational force that is a fundamental force in our nature 
that is provided by that is provided by the creator of this universe and uh, so gravitational force is a force which is provided by the creator of the of this heaven and earth and due to that gravitational force all the objects means this solar systems revolve around the sun uh, Lee uh, said this object with lesser mass is attracted to an object with a larger mass isn't that called by yes yes yeah so actually all of them they attract each other uh, maybe the effect will be smaller and uh, so what i was talking about children that there is a gravitational force which is responsible uh, for that this earth can rotate around the sun mm -hmm. But suppose children, for a moment, for a one second or maybe millisecond, if this force of gravitational disappear, and you know, these natural forces cannot uh, uh, disappear by themselves, only the creator of this heaven and earth can uh, make uh, that this force of gravity disappear. But suppose if this force of gravity disappear, then what happens? Life cannot be possible on this earth. We will move, we will fall away in any deep space in darkness, and we may collide with the other things present in the space. So there is a very importance of this gravitational force. We use importance of gravitational force. So <coughs> wait a minute. Yes, once um, it may possible. It may possible. Oh, okay, sir. Yeah. So now here, children. Um, now we have an equation. Even though here in gra grade nine, this equation is not required, and they have not mentioned uh, the writer of this book has not mentioned the equation. But I want to tell you that there is an equation uh, that was given by Isaac Newton for. Uh, that what about the Newton's law of gravitation? And this equation is F equal to, and is not working. F is equal to, or let me write, F is proportional to mass of one object, mass of second object, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. According to the Newton's law of gravitation, that this force of attraction is directly proportional to the Product, product of the two masses, product of the two masses, M1 and M2 means that the two objects, masses of the two objects. And what is R here? R is the distance between the two objects. For example, in case of sun and earth, in case of sun and earth, so you can write mass of sun multiplied by mass of earth divided by whatever the distance between sun and earth. All these things, children, you can find out on internet. What is the mass of sun? What is the mass of earth? And what is the distance between them? So you can find out the value of gravitational force acting between sun and earth. It's not about sun and earth, children. If you are able to find the distance between two any uh, planets, so you can find the force that how with that force how you will how much force is acting there. He also can yeah. yes, please. Uh, sir, if we have to find the gravitational force of one object, we have to remove the other from the equation, right? No, no, no. That both both objects should be there. Both objects should be there. Otherwise, uh, you can't measure. You know, one object is pulling the other object. In, in case of gravity, in case of gravity, you know, as per the law of gravitation, that uh, we are able to pull Earth, and Earth is pulling they the falling objects. So that's the case. This is the in pair. This force come into pair. Both objects are able to uh, experience force. Oh, okay, sir. Weight, children, that I told you, we have already discussed. Weight uh, depends on gravity. So that weight can be zero depending upon the value of gravity. All these things you have to do. Uh, don't forget to practice these worksheets, uh, exercise question, children. Now I want to move to the Newton's third law that is called the action and reaction. What is action and reaction, children? 
you might have studied this law in your grade seven and eight. Action and reaction. Uh, action is the reaction is the effect of the action. Yeah. Okay. Let me explain this Newton's third law. Hmm. Thank you, Lee. Let me explain this Newton's third law with the examples. Uh, Newton explained that uh, in our nature, what happens if we do some action? So there will be a reaction force, and these actions and reactions force are always exist in pair, and uh, they are equal in magnitude but opposite in directions. Let me repeat, children, what I'm saying here. According to Newton, he said in this in our nature, what happens if there is a force of action, there will be a force of reaction. If there is a force of action, there will be a force of reaction, and these two forces always act. Their magnitude will be same, but they always act in opposite direction. For example, for example, suppose just look at this girl. She is running, and when we run, actually, children, when we run, what happens? With our feet, with our feet, we make the ground. We press the ground in the backward direction. So that will be our applied force that is called the action or let me write action what about the reaction of the ground reaction of the ground reaction of the ground is that the ground will also exert a force in the forward direction in the forward direction that is called the reaction force reaction of the ground action by made by the this girl and the reaction is made by the ground on the foot of the girl so these two forces, remember, if five Newton is the force acting in the left hand side, that the same five Newton will be the force will be there on the right hand side. Magnitude is same, but children that the direction is opposite. So I can take on this side, this is the minus five Newton on the positive side on the right hand side, I will take it to positive five Newton, but negative sign means that is opposite in directions. Nothing else about the negative. And so action and reactions always exist in pair. Action is there, reaction force will be there. And now that's why children that we were talking about the topic of friction also. If we are able to make this ground, if we are able to make this ground very shiny, means very smooth surface, very plain surface. And so if I'm able to remove the friction, then what will happen? For example, uh, if some oil is placed on the ground, means oil is spread on the ground, then what happens children? I'm unable to make actions. If I try to push the ground in the backward direction with my foot, then I will slip because there is no action force. So there will be no reaction force by the ground due to the presence of the oil between the surface, between my shoes, my foot, that will make uh, to remove or minimize the friction and I'm unable to walk. That's why children on the plane surface, we can't move but we can slide on the you know the on the surface of snow we are able to slide due to the presence of less and less and less friction yes the magnitude of the force is always same Sir, if that's the case, then is friction really considered a reaction force or is that something else? Yeah. In case of when you are pressing the ground, so that is the friction force in the opposite direction and the ground will apply a force in the forward direction. In any way, you can consider it. Second second uh, example, I want to... Uh, uh, sir, is air resistant also a reaction or a reaction or a action force? Air resistance, you know, in free fall motion, if we consider that is the air resistance, that is again a free friction force. But in terms of air, it will exert in the opposite directions. But you know that the man is moving downward, person is moving downward. That is the downward force, and and uh, the reaction force will be that the particles exert a force on the body of the uh, person or the object which is falling downward. Now, in case of a gun, please look at this gun, children. And when we fire, you know, when we fire, what happens? Uh, when we press this trigger, then you know the bullet is released and the bullet is moving in the forward direction. So that is the action. Bullet is moving in the forward direction. But the reaction of the bullet on the gun, on the gun that the 
this gun, the overall this gun, it recoil. Recoil. Recoil means that it will. Uh, now suppose just look at me, children. If I press a trigger, the bullet will move in the forward direction. And look at my hand now; it will just move like this. A small jerk in the backward direction. So that is the reaction force of the bullet on the gun. So you also uh, try to remember this example. There are many examples, but but uh, one more example, children. Uh, as per the nature that we have Newton's third law, action and reaction. But what about the Bible? In Bible, it is written: if someone slap you on the left cheek, turn your right. According to the Bible teaching, and the Gandhi quoted from the Bible: if someone hit you, slap you, turn your right hand. Uh, means right, right cheek. So avoid to fight. Love your enemies. That the message of Bible, children. So I want to say, children, sometimes. Uh, Bible and the Holy Scriptures and the other uh, religion scripture is opposite to the science. Science says something different. Newton said, if someone hit you, you do reaction. If someone hit you once, you slap him hard twice. Uh, but Bible says, don't revenge. Revenges are mine. Revenges are mine. Okay, children, let me end.